Sure can be pretty in Texas. All right, well, I'm out walking my daughter's dog. About 10 years ago, my, my old dog died, and I went to the dog pound. I've always had rescue dogs. And I told him, I said, I've always had big dogs. I think, I think I'd like a little lap dog. Well, I had one little Shih Tzu when my kids were little. But uh, I said, I want a Pompignol, one of those with the little gremlin ears. And they said, oh, okay, okay, we'll let you know when one comes in. And uh, so, uh, lo and behold... They kept calling me like every couple of weeks. Oh, they found one. They found a Pompignol. And uh, every time I go there, it'd be pit bull. <laughs> I don't want a pit bull. <laughs> Let's rotate and see what Varro's doing. So I brought him up here so that he can, uh, you know, mark the territory. See there, the hog digs. They're just they're just killing my field. In addition, when I run my tractor over this, it. Uh, well, actually damaged my tractor. I think I've lost a tail wheel on a uh, mower deck because of it. I, I know that I lost the hood pin because of it. It's just, um, you can't run over it anymore. So come January, I'll have to get in there and, and uh, take care of it. Now, I saw him uh, squeeze under the fence way down here. He's not allowed to do that. He knows where the fence is aligned, but he's gotten carried away. So I'm going to have to call him back. Let's, let me holler here. Baro! You're on the wrong side. Come on. Baro! <whistles> Come on. That's my neighbor's property. He's a good guy. He doesn't allow hunting. I'm not too worried. I just want my dog uh, to respect the fence. But... Uh, you know, he might have smelled a he might have smelled a uh, hog. That's what his print right there, and he went in right here. He's pretty good. I see some cattle up there. He's pretty good about not bothering cattle, but if they bother him, if they come put their head down and and roll at him, he'll roll back. He, there's no chill with him. He doesn't. He's not a quitter. He's not a quitter. Anyway, I've been uh, today and yesterday. I've been walking him around. I'm. Hoping if I pick them up a couple of times a month and walk them on this property that it'll discourage the hogs. Maybe buy me a little time. Uh, last night was the first time we did it. And I got to say, it's the first night I don't see brand new fresh digs on the property. It's not to say that, you know, they don't have a circuit. The hogs don't have a circuit. And they don't come around and do this. Now there's a big boy right there. The bowl is up. He's just a young one. He's, I don't know, maybe 18 months old, maybe two years. So, But I'm hoping that uh, Varro went into the woods. I'm hoping that he went in there after the hogs. I don't know if you can see him. He's way down over yonder, heading this way. But everywhere I go, you'll see behind me that the hogs have gone in 150 feet along the, the edge of the thing and just plowed. 15 acre field and they can do that in one night so uh, the elderly guy around here he's not given details his name's benny and uh, he one day said steve i saw the hogs cross the road i said really how many did you see he said oh i think i saw 70 seven zero he saw 70 and he's not given to exaggeration so uh i know he saw a lot of hogs and uh Darn, you know, my game camera, when I put it up a couple of years ago, I only saw a few of them. But um, now I see a lot more than that. Who'd you see out there, Varro? Did you find somebody worth chasing? Come here. Good boy. Yeah, but I don't want to own a dog myself. This is, this is more than enough. Doggy setting. And then uh, he has no rules out here, so then I give him back all spoiled. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm all done with dogs. I don't think I'll ever get a dog of my own again. Uh, so, you know, I, the Pompeo story. So, uh, gosh, like for two years I was trying to get a little dog uh, after my last dog died. And uh, I always had a dog ever since I was a kid, ever, since I was born. And uh, after a couple of years of not having a dog, I realized maybe I'm just doing something because society told me I need to have a pet. And uh, the liberty of not having to feed a dog and care for a dog. And you do get a lot out of a dog. I'm not saying you don't. You do. 
But uh, if you want to travel, if you want to do something, if you're as independent as me, sometimes dogs are uh, a, a, a bit of a chore. Not everybody wants to watch your dogs anymore. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a darn shame not to make them part of your life and integrate them with your life. You know, you should. So uh, anyway, after a couple of years of that, I decided I'm going to be dog free from now on. So uh, other than I borrow Destiny's dog, my daughter's dog, and he is a wolf, a genuine wolf. So uh, when he he's out here, I'm hoping that he's discouraging the animals. In addition, I let him stay out at night so that, uh, you know, if somebody's up here in my field, they'll come and he'll come and get him. Now horses, they're quite a bit different than than uh, dogs. Dogs have got to be in an interaction. They really need people. In fact, you can't put a bunch of food down in a dog bowl and disappear for a month. But these guys, they've got a 50,000 gallon stock tank. They can graze themselves. It's interesting to note that some of the Native American words for horse were big dog. They translate, of course, they didn't have any such thing before. The, they never saw anything like this, you know. These guys like coming up and visiting me, but I can go away, you know, and come back and they're still right here doing their things. So, but uh, dog you have to interact with. So uh, I don't know if I'll ever be a dog. I, I don't think I want to be. I think it's too much responsibility and uh, too much commitment. Uh, people talk about fur babies. Well, to be honest, uh, dog, dogs, and well, they die in eight years and the average kid doesn't, you know. And, the kids need a lot more input. Having had both, I'll, I'll let you know that uh, they're not they're not human. <laughs> they're not substitutes for the complexity of a child. But um, I've decided that I I don't want to mess with uh, dogs anymore. Uh, the borrowed dog is the perfect dog for me, and I'm hoping that if I borrow them a couple of times a month for two days and let them do this thing around the thing, that it will discourage uh, the hogs. Eventually, I'll have to put hog wire around here. I'll have to get traps or, um, you know, my days of hunting are done. I don't like it to begin with. It's it's a bloody, messy, ugly thing that I don't like doing. But um, there's no predators for hogs, and they'll breed uh, twice a year, 18 each, and they'll plow a field, ruin your stuff, uh, eat all the turkeys, eat all the native animals. Uh, we really have a hog problem. Our taxpayer money should be going for a sterilizing program for uh hogs so that we don't have this problem but there we go you know we spend our money in the wrong way but anyway the horses I, I like i do not consider as pets they're uh they're livestock they're domesticated livestock i don't need them to curl up in my lap they don't need it either um, they're just happy with me providing for them and trimming their hooves once a quarter but uh dog <laughs> especially a wolf uh if you're gonna get something that's a little unusual, you gotta, they don't, they're not quite dog-like. He's more of a pack mentality. Um, he likes structure, you can't let him get up on the table. You can't let him be alpha, because uh, then he'll alpha you. So you gotta be in control the whole time. Uh, you know, like I called him back from where he went. He's not allowed to go under the fence, he knows that. Um, but anyway. I don't think, uh, like, subscribe down below or comment down below if you're ever going to uh, give up on, on pet ownership. I would say dogs are the most difficult pet because they require constant interaction with you. They honestly do. Even a bunny, you could put uh, food and water in a bunny cage and, uh, you know, leave it alone. It's okay. It's not going to affect its its mental state. But you neglect a dog and you'll make it neurotic. And that's not fair, right? We've domesticated them to be man's best friend. And if we don't spend that time with them, if they're just, you know, like horses in a pasture. Here, I'm going to rotate. Look at my dog in the lake there. Chilling out. But uh, anyway, I don't, I don't think I'll ever do dogs again. I like being dog free. In addition, their food is stinky. They're kind of stinky. They're a little gross, and uh, you do get a lot out of them. But this guy's going to want to come in the house, and you could see that he's going to be covered in mud and uh, water. <laughs> Enjoying himself in there. Uh, I got time for that, right? I don't want to clean up from all of that. <laughs> Ridiculous.
He sure does enjoy the farm, though. And, you know, I enjoy having them out here, too. I enjoy having them out here. Anyway, having had dogs all my life and then going, it took a couple years. I still like a little pompano with the little ears, the gremlin here. And uh, even when I had that little Shih Tzu, it was a family dog, not mine. I think I would spoil a little dog, lap dog, but uh, I want to travel. I want to get to Europe. I got this build project. I got too many things to to add a add a full time dog in my life. But having him come out twice a month, I think he'll keep my hogs away. We'll see. Last night I I didn't have any hogs in the field, so. Uh, but uh, I'll work on the hog plan, and yeah, here's something. You know, people are moving the hogs, right? They like the hog hunt, so they, they're moving them. They, you don't need to. They're going to move themselves, so stop moving hog. But in addition, all, all, the, uh, all the rednecks in Texas, every time I say, I got a lot of hogs. Oh, I love the hog hunt, blah, 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 you know. I'll, ooh, I'll come on to them, and I'll say, okay, good date and time. Come on out. Don't drink. I don't want any drinking, but bring out a buddy. You guys can hunt as much as you want. I even know what time they come, and they never show up. <laughs> What people mean to say is they went hog hunting once when they were 14 with somebody in a guided environment and uh, they had a successful and good time, campfire and all that. There are not many hog hunters that are like, oh yeah, I'll, I'm a professional hog hunter. So a lot of talk and then the, and I get that all, oh yeah, I'll hunt, your, I'll hunt your hogs and I'll take care of that for you. And as soon as I make allowance, all right, man, come on out and you tell me the day. I'll make sure the animals are put up. I'll give you full thing. I'll tell you where they, nothing. They Nobody wants to, to drag a big stinky hog. I, I would even bury them in the ground for them. All they'd have to do is shoot them. But nobody wants to come out at three in the morning and sit around and maybe not have hogs. If they catch scent of something different, they're not having it, right? So uh, people are in love with the idea of hog hunting. They're in love with the idea of a guided hunting experience. But when the rubber meets the road, when I was a kid, guys would show up at your gates with uh, uh, dogs and a crew and ask permission to hunt your property and you could hear them they go over fences they get the whole community in on a whole county you could hear them go all night long hunting hog and hunting whatever they coon sometimes but uh those days are gone <laughs> five dollars for a little hog tail is not enough to encourage anybody to come out uh spend at three o'clock in the morning um and again i'm not, not gonna allow people to drink and hunt on my property, you know. So right away, I've already turned off one of the main reasons. They, they just want away from their wife and kids. They just want to come out and sit somewhere and drink beer. And, well, I could do that. But uh, I'm going to have to buy my own rifle. And I don't know. I'm going to have to be the, the spot of a wolf or, you know, a panther or whatever it was that was controlling hogs. But farmers, uh, hunters, stop moving piglets. We don't need that. And then uh, any state guy uh, uh, politics, I want my tax dollars to go towards fighting hogs. That's that's what needs to be done. This is ridiculous. I'm just a small little pasture. This isn't real, real grass. I bet you on uh, 15 acres that they've already killed three. So I don't, commercial farmer, they cannot afford a 30 or 40% loss. Uh, you know, and if I leave these hogs go, they'll kill it all. So... Um, it's a very expensive to put grass seed down. So, all right, rambling walkabout with my dog. Dog, that's the perfect of all dogs. I don't think I'll ever own a dog again. He's too muddy to come in the house. He's just gonna have to enjoy himself, all swampy. That's why he likes coming out of here. I got no rules other than all he's got to do is this: walk around and be the boss, right, Varl? Thank you, buddy. You're a very good wolf. Very good wolf. I appreciate you much doing your wolfy thing. All right, like, subscribe, follow me along. This is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. Bye.